Hello everyone, it's Matt from The Pen Habit, and I am glad to have you here for another video. Now, today's video is going to be kind of a, a neat little pen. Uh, this is a pen sent to me uh, to review by a Pen Habit viewer, Andres. So I met him at the DC Pen Show, and we've emailed back and forth several times. He had this neat little Mont Blanc, Monterosa, that he wanted to uh, introduce me to. So this is a vintage Mont Blanc, kind of a student pen, uh, one of their lower end pens, but really kind of neat. Um, the pen was made uh, generally between, I think, 1954 and 1959. Uh, and it's, it's a neat neat pen. They, there's a lot of different varieties, but one of the things that's kind of cool about this is, um, is the nib. So this is a, uh, a 042 is the model, and then there's a K, and I, you, you probably can't see it very well here, but I'll try to photograph it. There's a KF on the end of the, the barrel here, and that means uh, Kugel fine. So it's a fine nib, but it's a Kugel nib, and I don't know a lot about these Kugel nibs, except that uh, it has some really nice, nice, uh, nice flex and bounce to it for a steel nib. Um, so let's let's go over the pen from the top. Uh, it's uh, got the rounded off cap, kind of a standard cigar shape, a very springy clip. Um, it's it's actually feels a little loose. It feels like you could bend it out of place. Gold plated here, and then you've got this kind of wave motif along the the cap band. Um, it says Monterosa, Mont Blanc. Uh, one of the things about this particular pen, the Monterosa, it comes in a whole variety. It this this marking on the side of the cap, there's a whole bunch of different kinds. And you can find some threads on Fountain Pen Network or some of the, the other forums about the Monterosa. There's a gentleman in Australia who collects a bunch of them. They come in different colors and things like that. Um, but uh, and, and so you can use the mark to help identify when the pen was made. Uh, barrel comes down and then it's a piston filler, so it's got the, the knob down here. I will tell you, <laughs> and I learned this from firsthand experience. This knob turns so smoothly, you forget it's a piston filler knob and you think it's a blind cap. Um, I learned that to my detriment when I was sitting in a meeting at work and I was like, oh, this is loose. And I started twisting it and ink poured all over my hands in the paper in the middle of the meeting. <laughs> it's a piston filler knob, not a blind cap. Way to go, Matt. <laughs> anyway, uh, in terms of the cap, so it is one and a quarter turns to remove the cap. Section tapers down. It's got a nice ink window in here, uh, which I like a lot, especially for kind of a lower end pen from Mont Blanc. Um, and then it's got this nice Monterosa steel nib. Now you'll notice the tines on this, the shoulders are pretty narrow and the tines on the nib are pretty long. That gives this nib a really neat bouncy feeling that I've never felt on a steel nib before. Uh, I know for a certain period, especially during, I think during the World War II era, there were a lot of steel, flexible steel nib pens made. Um, you don't see a lot of them around anymore. Um, and, and most of what gets sold today as a flexible steel nib is not not that. This is not a full flex nib, but it is certainly very bouncy, um, which I like a lot. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a black pen with a couple of, you know, like the, the wave accent on the cap band, um, the gold clip, but this was meant to be a student pen. It was a lower end pen with a steel nib instead of a gold nib, um, not terribly expensive, and, uh, but it's, it's a great writer. It's a really, really good writer. Um, I was very pleasantly surprised when Andres sent this to me. So um, let's go through the measurements on this. When it's capped, you're looking at 126 millimeters. Uncapped, it's a very... Oh, no, 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 no. You see what I said? It turns so smoothly, I, I did get... Gra <laughs> oh, no. I just did it. Oh, maybe maybe I, I caught it in time. So what I did is I had my finger on the, the piston knob and I was unscrewing the cap. And instead of unscrewing the cap, it unscrewed the piston knob. Fortunately, this pen is getting toward empty. So I don't think I expelled any ink into the cap. <laughs> I did it again. <laughs> so that shows you how smoothly it operates, which really is quite impressive when you consider this pen is, you know, nearing, um, what, 70 years old? Uh, anyway... 
Uncapped, you're looking at 114 millimeters, which is really, in my mind, too short to use. It feels like a golf pencil to me. Um, it does post, and it posts quite securely, though. And when you post it, you're looking at a, quite a reasonable 142.8. It's very nicely balanced when it's posted. Uh, this is a pen I would have to use posted, but when it is posted, it feels quite comfortable. Now, I will say that I tend, when it's posted and when I write with this pen, I tend to hold it either on or above the threads. Fortunately, the threads are very, very smooth. Um, and it looks like we got a, a little, uh, little bit of uh, ink tattoo there. Um, anyway, in terms of Width, you are looking at 9.7 millimeters in the middle of this, this section, which is a little narrow for my taste, which is why I hold it up here at 11 millimeters, which is right in my sweet spot. And then uh, 13 millimeters is the widest point of the cap. It's also quite a light pen at only 11 grams uncapped or unposted and 15 grams with being capped or posted. Um, so it's a small pen. But it's really, really nice writer. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of a writing sample. This is the Mont Blanc, Monterosa 042. It is a steel nib, and it's known as a Kugel. Fine steel nib that has a little bit of flex to it. The ink is Pilot's Eero Kujaku. In my never-ending attempt to empty a single bottle of ink, and since I'm closest to emptying Kujaku, that's the one I ink everything with. Um, okay, so let's do the quote here. So um, before I, I get into the rest of the writing sample, I want to talk about this quote just a second. Um, one of the reasons this quote spoke to me when I was looking up a quote for this review is, is lately there's been a lot of talk. I've seen a, a lot of posts. Um, Anna from the Well-Appointed Desk blog I, uh, did one. Joe from Gentleman Stationer did one. I saw a post on Reddit about it. A lot of people are talking about why we collect pens? Is it worth it? You know, what is it about this that we do? And, and some people have said, you know, I found myself treating this very much like a habit. Now, anyone who knows my history with fountain pens knows that I, when I dove in, I dove in really hard, really fast, spent a ton of money my first year and a half of fountain pens. Um, learning everything and trying to gather as much information as I can. And I, I'm not, that's not to say it's all bad, because I was able to do the pen habit as a result of that. That being said, um, I found that I wasn't enjoying my pens very much. I was so busy acquiring them that I wasn't enjoying them at all. And, uh, and recently I was, you know, I found myself sitting in my, my office, which is just next door to the, the studio room here, and I'd been surfing through pen websites for two hours, and I realized, you know what? I haven't written in my journal for two weeks. I've been so busy acquiring pens and getting the pen habit videos ready and stuff like that that I haven't actually gotten to use the pens. Um, and, and a lot of people say, well, why do you spend so much money on the pens? Uh, you know, and it, and it is a little ludicrous in the grand scheme of things. I treat it kind of like a savings account, not an investment, but a savings account. You know, I could put cash in a bank or I can put cash in pens. That's kind of how I, I, I put my, 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 uh, some of my extra savings into pens, which I, I can use, but most of them, you know, if, I, if I'm ever in a 
a jam, I can sell my pens and make most of my money back. And, and that's fine for me. It's not for everybody, but it's fine for me. Um, but there's not enough time spent loving the moment. And when I mean loving the moment, I don't mean the moment I find or buy a pen. I mean loving the moment of using pens. Um, and this, this quote really spoke to me because I feel like people who watch my videos, you're, you're into it. If you watch these videos, if you've seen more than a couple, or if you watch them for some reason other than to leave nasty comments, you're into a pen. You've probably at least at some point gotten into the, I am spending so much money and so much time around this pen hobby that I'm getting sick of it or that sort of thing. And, and what I tell you is if you ever feel that way, take a little bit of time and live in the moment of using what you've bought. Every time you feel the need to sit down and find the next perfect pen or find, you know, spend hours trolling through eBay, shut down your computer, walk over, pick up one of your inked pens and sit down and write for half an hour. And I, I'd be willing to bet that you do that enough times, your desire to go out and buy the next big thing or find the perfect pen will go away, at least a little bit. Um, so let's, uh, you know, I'm, that's, that's a big thing for me is I'm working really hard to live in the moment a little bit more and love the moment of just using my pens because buying more and buying more and buying more, there's no such thing as the perfect pen. You're never going to find, you know, we use the term grail pen all the time in this community. There's no such thing as a grail pen um, because the instant you get one, there's going to be another one. So love the moment. And now I shall step down off my soapbox and get back to the writing sample. Okay, uh, clean a little bit of ink off the nib here. So as I mentioned, this nib has some nice bounce to it. You can see there's some really reasonable line variation here. I'll do it a little bit closer on the side camera as well so you can see. You know, it's, it's not... It's stiff, but it's got a nice bounce. And when you're not worrying about flexing the pen, if you're just trying to get a nice bounce to it, what I find is as I write, I get some really nice, you know, pooling at the bottom of, of my, my strokes um, because the, the tines spread just enough to give me a little bit of, of really nice bounce. The nib is quite smooth, um, as is the case for a lot of vintage nibs. And I think people rhapsodize vintage nibs a little bit because they're so much smoother than modern modern nibs. I will tell you on the new old stock vintage nibs that I've gotten, they've been, they felt very much like modern nibs and then they smooth out over time. So um, some, so I think some of the smoothness on vintage nibs is just, these are pens that have been used and they've kind of honed and adjusted themselves and smoothed themselves out over time. That's just my personal opinion, not based in any scientific fact, but there you go. I, I've been really, uh, really philosophical in this review. It's going to run long, I'm afraid. <laughs> in any case, uh, wetness. So it is decently wet, not terribly so. Um, if you push the tines, you're going to get a little bit more wetness though, but it is a pretty fine line. Like for instance, you can see if I, if I press the tines and get a little bit of wetness out of here, it's quite wet there. Um, reverse writing. Very fine line, but quite scratchy. Um, really doesn't have a super sensitive sweet spot at all. I haven't had any problems with hard starting or skipping or uh, ink starvation. I mean, that's one thing with these old pens and especially with piston fillers, you just don't see a lot of ink starvation uh, on these pens unless they're super, super wet. And I feel like in, in the older days, they actually manufactured the feeds with enough forethought to keep that from happening. Whereas I feel like a lot of the nibs now, they just, because, because the company that makes the pen doesn't also make the nib and feed, a lot of times the nib and feed don't get the attention I feel like they ought to. And we don't see enough innovation in that space. But in any case, this little uh, Mont Blanc Monterosa is really a nice pen. I'm uh, I'm, very, I'm really grateful. Thank you, Andres, for sending this to me. I like this pen a lot. Um, I love the feel of the nib. This is a pen I could get a really nice rhythm going as, with my cursive writing because um, you got a little bit of bounce out of that steel, that Kugel fine nib. It's really, it's really pretty, pretty cool. Um, and I don't think these are terribly expensive when you can find them because um, they're not, you know, super rare vintage Mont Blancs with, uh, you know, 
gigantic gold flex nibs or anything like that. It's just a neat nib. It's just a, a neat pen, neat little pen, nothing flashy, but really, really solid writer. So thank you again to Andres for loaning the pen. Thank you to all of you for watching the review and sitting through my long diatribes if you if you haven't fast forwarded through all of them. If you have any questions or comments, more information about the Mont Blanc Monterosa, please leave it on penhabit.com in the comments section or on YouTube in the comments section there. You can also email me penhabit at gmail.com or find me on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, Instagram, Pinterest. I'm sure there's some other ones. I, I pop up every now and again on the FP Geeks forum as DR Chumley. I'm occasionally on Reddit, so I, I hop around a little bit on, uh, on the pen community within, within the internet. So thank you again for watching, and we will see you here on the next review of The Pen Habit. Bye.